Welcome back everyone. Today we are doing a install on the Underground Graphics Bronco Sport. Today we are doing a PPF kit that has been requested by many of the Bronco Sport owners. We do have or will have a printout for everything and all the placements for you guys and so it's not going to look like this but we will have a somewhat of a templated cutout and a rendering of the way this is laid out on a sheet of paper so you all know where everything is going to go and which pillars are which as well as which headlight and everything is what and where it goes so i'm going to go over and do a quick as you call it an inventory of what we have here and this is just one side of the vehicle with the exclusion of the roof and the hood that we have up here. But I do want to go ahead and give everyone a run through on what we will have in the kit if you were to order everything from us. So starting here from the right, we have the D pillar that goes all the way at the back of the Bronco Sport. Though some of these pieces are oriented in a slightly awkward position. They're not exactly to match up in the direction that everything is but we do want to make sure that we have everything in one spot and this does help us save space by kind of contouring them and putting them in different ways. So we, as mentioned, we have the D pillar. Right here we have the A pillar. This is the front of the B pillar and this is the rear of the B pillar. So this would be the front door and the rear door. Right here we have the driver's side headlight and those do have a specific cut. And so it will be obvious of which is which, but as I mentioned before, they will be labeled. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of skip up here to the front so that way it's not too confusing for you guys. This right here is the roof and above that we have a full hood piece. Moving on from the right half of it going on to the left half, we have two door cups. As I mentioned, this is one side of the vehicle so we do have the front door cup and the rear door cup. It does not matter on which direction these go. Uh, there is not a front, there's not a rear, there's not an orient orientation for them either. That is up to you where you want to place those. Here we have the rear of the C-pillar, which is that large quarter panel piece, and it does have the cutout for that little bit of an accent that is on the back there. And here is the front of the C-pillar. So now we've gone ahead and done the inventory on all the different pieces that we have. It is up to you if you want to purchase a full kit or specific pieces. You know, not everybody wants to protect everything that's on the Bronco, but it is recommended to at least get the hood, roof, frontal pieces, and anything that will protect the piano black because it is extremely easy to scratch that piano black and it is not as easy to get those scratches out. If that is something that interests you, we definitely recommend hood, roof, and everything that's piano black. I personally would say headlights as well, just because we personally are in Texas and there is almost not a single vehicle that hasn't had a rock kicked up at it at some point. So with that being said, up to you what you want to order. Those are our recommendations. On to tools. We have a very small condensed tool list. Really, it's not what we typically have. So we do have a squeegee, and this squeegee is very similar to the one that we will have provided for you all. We do have a black one and we have a yellow one. They do have the same amount of rigidity. It does not matter which one you order. If yellow is your favorite color, recommend ordering the yellow one, but they are the same. We do have our 16 ounce bottle of water with eight to 10 drops of Dawn dish soap because that is what will be needed to spray on the surface of the vehicle and underneath the paint protection film, the PPF, where it is going to meet up to the vehicle. It's going to give you that slidability so that way you don't have to worry about laying it on and it not being in the right spot. You do have a little bit of time to move that around. With that, we do have plenty of towels. You do want to have as many towels as you really can get your hands on. Uh, this is a wet install, as mentioned with the soap, so you do want to be able to wipe up any extra water that you have dripping anywhere. Also, you do probably want to lay towels in certain areas, as I will show you, because if the water is trailing down on something, it might contact with dirt or dust or something and also trail that dirt down with it. 
and it will trap underneath your PPF. Also, without mentioning, cleaning is key. Very, very, very important with paint protection film because it is optically clear. It is not like vinyl. It will not hide certain things. If you do have a hair underneath paint protection film, it will show. It is very difficult to get that hair out. You can try to use your fingernail. You can try to spray it out. Sometimes it may work. It is not guaranteed. You can possibly try to scratch it out with your fingernail and you might end up with some little white marks underneath the adhesive just from running your fingernail back and forth. So clean areas only is very important for that. Along with having a clean area, you do want to have a very good temperature for the area that you're working in. You do not want to do this outside. You do not want to do this in too hot of an area and you do not want to do this in too cool of an area. With the soap and water mix that we have, it is the eight to 10 drops that I mentioned. However, if it is a bit warm where you are, right now we have the shop set at about 72 degrees, but if it were roughly about 75 degrees, I would probably have more than 10, 10 or more drops of soap in the bottle just to get that little extra amount of slidability on the PPF. However, if the temperature is at that 75 or higher range, and you do not have enough soap, then the adhesive will begin to tack extremely soon and it will be difficult to try and pull that back up without having any adhesive damage which would look like a white mark on any of those pieces. So you do want to have an enclosed area with a very good temperature set and to make sure that there isn't a lot of wind or anything going around. If need be, you can even spray water into the air. Maybe it might grab onto some particles bring them down. Typically, I like to spray myself. It might sound a little bit weird, but same how some people will mist a perfume or a cologne in front of them and walk into it. Sometimes I do like to do that just to make sure that nothing that is on me transfers onto the vehicle. Now that everything that is important is taken care of, we're going to move on to the vehicle. I will start installing the simpler parts of this kit. So that will be the everything that is piano black, the pillars all the way from the front to the back. And then after that, we will go on to the more difficult parts, such as the roof, headlight, and the hood. So stick with us. All right, so we are going to start with the D pillar back here. This one is going to be fairly quick. So we're kind of going from easiest to the more difficult things slowly. With the PPF, you do want to just kind of get it started. Definitely want to make sure that you have clean hands. If you want to go ahead and spray your hands beforehand, that is fine. Yes, I am saying the word hands a whole lot, but they are important because they are a pair of tools when it comes to vinyl work. So I am going to just pull this about halfway. And you do want to be very, very generous with that water and soap. If you do have, or if you've seen our previous videos and you know of our alcohol water mix, if you have an alcohol bottle, keep that very, very, very far away as to not mix it up with your soap and water because the alcohol water mix will make the PPF stick immediately and you will not be able to move it around like so. Now we're going to use that provided squeegee. And if your PPF does happen to stick, it seems like right away, then you can move it back around. And as long as it's still wet underneath, you are able to lift it back up and lay it back down. And before applying it and using your squeegee, you do want to wet the top of it. That's so that it does not move around. And I'm going to put a good amount of pressure down here at the bottom. It doesn't have to be at the bottom, but I'm going to start there because I want to lock in the top. And you want to go over it quite a few times to make sure that the water is out of there. And if you need to, so you don't have that water trail back in, you can wipe off the top. You do want to wipe in the direction that you are squeegeeing so that way you don't move the material. Now this will still move around. This top is locked in. So that is what we call the tack point. Now you want to use your squeegee and just go down. I like to follow gravity because it just makes it a lot easier. A quick tip. If you do have scratches already on your black panels, you can 
first clay bar the surface and then go back over it with a rubbing compound and that should get rid of some of those scratches. Can't guarantee it will get rid of all of them, but it will help make that install look quite a bit better. We're gonna wipe up our excess water. And just before we start to move on, we are confident with our product. Now, if you do wanna go ahead and heat that up, it will get rid of all those scratches. So it is a self-healing protectant. And we are going to move on. I am gonna grab the heat gun just to get rid of those. I'm going to move on to these two pillars and we'll keep it rolling. Like it never happened. So moving on, we're doing the same thing with this piece, but it is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to spray this down first. And I'm gonna get just kind of a dog ear going on the PPF, spray my hands. Just assuming that when I grab my keys or anything like that, that I grab dirt. Always assume that your hands are just dirty and spray them off anyway. Now that we have the C-pillar rear out, Gonna try to make sure that it doesn't touch any of the car. It's very, can be a little awkward. Don't worry about your initial placement. You can always slide it wherever you need it to be. Now, same as the last pillar. You can spray the top. Keep your hand where you like the positioning. Once again, I am going to start at the top. Get that tacked. You can see it is still moving around on me a bit, so I might have to go over this a few more times. I think I'm starting to lock it in now, just a bit. Still have a little bit of movement, but I'm not too worried about that. If you do have a little bit of movement at the top, once you have your water pushed out from there, you can put your hand up here a little bit of pressure if you can kind of hear me applying pressure to that piece. And just hold that in place, make sure it doesn't move. And since the water already wants to follow the gravity and go down, I'm not going to try and fight that. I think I can move my hand now. Yes, we can, good. I am stopping right at that edge because if I try to force those thinner pieces, they might try to buckle up on me. So I'm going to get this down first. That way this kind of A-frame is locked in. Now you do want to kind of bend your squeegee just a little bit just so that way you're not catching the lip of the squeegee on the edge of that PPF. And you want to follow where that cutout is. Same as I'm doing, because if you were to push down too soon, it will move this piece down. But if you were to go up, then it will wrinkle up. So I'm going to follow that line. Just slowly work that out. Want, you can go about halfway over. Make sure you have that locked in. I'm gonna go downwards with this top piece because that is following the design of this cutout. Even though I like to go with the gravity, I am going to follow up the way that this is. I do have a little bit of a bubble here. That is no problem. I can go back with your towel. Double check. It is good to just kind of dab off your water and make sure that your placement is good because once this starts to dry, you don't want to move it back around. 
I do want to mention that this does take a few hours to dry. The bigger the piece, the longer it will take to dry because the more water that you will have to use. These smaller pieces, you could let them sit for roughly four to eight hours and they will dry out. Four hours, usually you'll have a really good tack on them. You won't have to worry about them lifting up. I wouldn't recommend dry them after those four hours. Eight hours, you should be able to hit the road. Bigger pieces, I would wait possibly about 10 for them to adhere properly, but you should still be fine with that. Roughly eight hours. So don't pull your vehicle out if you have it in the garage and you're doing this. Leave it in there for that wait time. So that way you can get everything to cure. If you do see water up top, it will evaporate out. Of course, if it's a large enough bubble, it will leave a white mark. So it is always good to try and get that excess water out off the bat. I'm liking this. We are going to move on to the front portion of that pillar and continue on to the front of the vehicle. Right, so now that we've got the D and C pillar on, we're gonna do the front of the C pillar. And that is really the same as these other pieces. This one does have a little bit of a split right there. So we are actually going to pull that last. As always, make sure your hands are clean. Now, I don't need to spray with the backing on the PPF, but sometimes I like to, so that way, if there is any pet fur or anything like that, or hair that transfers from my hands, then it'll stay stuck on that paper. There's that split that I had mentioned. So you don't wanna let that touch itself while it's dry. But if it ends up wet, that is totally okay. This is adhesive side to adhesive side. It won't stick if that is wet on both sides. We are going to spray pillar. And even though I did it this way, if it works easier for you guys to just pull off the film up until that point, just about a quarter inch before that split starts, you can do that. Lay this top portion and then work that bottom half. But I guess you can say I like a challenge and I did it the hard way. <clears throat> Spray the top so that way it doesn't move around when we go to squeegee it down. Make sure we like our positioning. I'm gonna lock in this middle first, just a little. Now we have that not moving around really. It did just break loose, but it's okay. And typically I would tack from the top since I don't want those two legs moving around on that bottom half. I'm just gonna move this water out of here. You do wanna push all the way up if you are going to kind of partially start somewhere. That way the water doesn't drain back down. If you do have a towel like I do on my shoulder you can dab that water up right after you push it out so you don't have to worry about it. Trailing back in, trying to get this free. I am gonna work one of these legs first. Quick spray. And if you find yourself needing a smaller squeegee, it is okay to cut this one down a little bit. We actually have one here that we've cut down we may have ordered it that way, not sure, but you can help yourself out and probably cut off about that much of it. You'll still have a fairly good chunk of it to be able to work with those bigger pieces, but then you'll have a smaller one to work with these smaller pieces. But you can still definitely get by with the full size. That wasn't bad at all. Now when you are wiping this, you do want to kind of either go away from the edges or along the edges. So since I have two edges alongside here, I'm gonna wipe up. But if I were to go from up here and wipe down, it might catch that corner. And then you might end up with lint or something that was on your towel underneath the PPF. So just be mindful of how you wipe. 
so now that we have that on, we are going to move on to this middle pillar, the B pillar. Now these are pretty easy to, at least off the bat at first glance, kind of get mixed up. So I do recommend if you do split them up, these two pillars, to put one up just to make sure that it does match that size. If you do have a little bit of extra here, then it's not gonna line up entirely completely because it's a little bit oversized, but it is definitely good to double check that before you start laying it on. If you do happen to put this on without squeegeeing it down and it looks like it's off, that is okay. You can take it off while it's still wet underneath there and move it over to the other pillar if you happen to get those mixed up. Of course, that will increase the chances of you getting anything trapped underneath it, but you won't have to get a new piece because it's not stuck. I'm gonna spray this surface. Kinda started tacking a little bit sooner than I wanted it to. So you definitely do wanna spray both surfaces, the adhesive side and the vehicle. Move this into place, get this nice and centered, make sure I'm happy with that. Put pressure down here at the bottom so I can lock in the top. And for these pieces, I'm not pushing too hard until I know I have that water out. Now that I have this locked in, I can start moving down. Wipe away from those edges, not towards the edges. Just gonna get that excess water. Even though I don't need to wipe this side, just in case something ran down onto this pillar, I am gonna wipe this one off, even though I am about to do an install on that one. Not much difference with this one. Really the only thing that might be a change is if you have that keypad. Which that's not an issue. It's just going to light up whenever you run your squeegee over it, most likely. Hopefully I don't lock Greg out of his Bronco. Light pressure. pressure. I'm going to hold this bottom just to make sure it doesn't sway. You do want to go all the way down to where the edge of that PPF is just to make sure you have all that water out. As you can tell by me just using that towel, that the keypad still works just fine. All right, we have that taken care of. Onto the A pillar. This is also, as the other ones were, fairly simple. You do want to be mindful that the top has this notch that is to go around where it curves over, and then the bottom is going to be rounded. So that is the only thing to take as far as placement. Spray our panel down. Now for this, I'm gonna lock in the middle first. That might sound a little awkward, but I'm gonna have to kind of give this a little bit of a shift. As usual, we are gonna wet the top, but I'm going to push the water out this way first. Now 
Now we have the middle locked in. I'm gonna move up here to the top, just in case that ended up starting to attack. I am gonna pull it up, give it a quick spray, so I can move it back around, just like that. And I'm gonna pull from right here, if you can see a little bit of a pull that I'm giving it, just so it meets up to that edge. I'm just gonna go from that spot where I attacked earlier, and just push that water out. You do wanna keep your hands there, your fingers here, continuing that pull while you're pushing this water out, because you don't want any of that water that's trailing back to make it return to its original shape. I do think that these fingers up here will probably keep coming back until that water starts to drain, drain out. But it is laid down enough that we can start moving to the bottom. I remember doing the same thing here. I am gonna pull just a little bit just to get to that bottom edge. And this is personal preference. If you're okay with having that little bit of edge exposed, you can leave it that way. I am kind of going a little bit of an extra mile here. I'm just gonna push the water straight down. Keep your hand there while you're doing that. And it will line up where you left it. I'm just gonna keep pushing that water out. Nothing new. And then for this edge, if you can, just kind of roll squeegee over the edge. You see I'm starting from here, I have it at a weird angle. And I'm just kind of pointing straight down with it. Just trying to get that water out. It's not gonna get all that water out off the bat, but just enough for it to start drying. I do still have these ends floating right here. So if anything, I'll probably have to wait for about an hour or so just for that to dry out. I can lay those edges down. It is that same way on this side as well, but that's no problem. This is definitely why you want to do this inside, as mentioned and in a good environment. If you are gonna wipe off the excess water, you do wanna keep your towel away from those edges because you never know what the towel might be picking up and it might end up inside of the PPF. Just be very careful. Now while that's drying, we're gonna show you how to do the door cups. Those will be fairly quick. Might be a little awkward to try and get the squeegee in there but I believe we can do it. All right, so onto the door cups. And I believe that I had already mentioned that these are not side specific. They can go either this way, they can go that way. It doesn't matter. All that I would probably say that you should do is lock your Bronco and then put your key inside or fairly far away from the vehicle. So that way it doesn't open back up and unlock itself because I have found that one of the easier ways to do these door cups is to slip them in. But since the squeegee is fairly large, let's see if I can tack this top. Yeah, it's starting to stick a little bit. Once that top starts to stick, Everything starts falling into place. All right, that's a little bit better. Now this is why you want to keep your key away. So you are going to have to pull on that door handle, try and sneak in here. If you do lock your Bronco and then you have your key in your pocket and you attempt this, 
your door will unlock and you might bump yourself in your forehead, which would not be fun. So this is definitely why I would recommend putting your key away from you. Definitely put it in a place where you're going to remember where you put it. Have somebody hold on to it. Just make sure they don't drive off. To those of you who like to wear rings or any type of jewelry on your hands, not going to scratch that inside. Or even for those who have tough fingernails, make sure we wipe up our water. Now we can move on to those difficult parts. All right, so before we move on to the hood and the roof, I do want to do the headlight. This one might be just a bit tricky. Go ahead and spray my hands, make sure my hands are good and clean. Don't have anything that transferred over from the previous sides. Try and sneak my fingernail under there. Spray your surface as always. Anytime you are doing any type of paint protection film, you do want to wipe more around the surface of what you're installing. So wanted to go ahead and wipe around this grill and the hood because spraying all of this water would bring any dirt from those pieces onto the headlight. Now I am going to lock in from this portion over so I can work the slightly more difficult side. And this isn't going to disrupt the lighting of your headlight. You're not going to notice it while driving. It will add that layer of protection. As mentioned, we are in Houston. And on Houston roads, there are plenty of things like to get stuck to your car. So I'm gonna pull this up so I can get a little bit more of a slide for it. So I can adjust this some more. Those fingers that keep coming back, you do want to try and push those out, get them to drain their water. Because if you keep trying to push them, then they will keep trying to come back. So you do need to get rid of them. I'm gonna push this over so I can get the whole headlight. Top again because it's starting to dry out. Keeping my thumb right here. Let's see if I can lock this in and then I can try and get those recesses. Tricky trying to get this to stay where it needs to be and to push the water out of it. But tricky doesn't mean impossible. Just have to keep trying. Now I've got this lower portion here that's still floating. Go ahead and we're going to spray that, spray the top. Start working down from the flat part. You might need to use your squeegee as a plow. Up here to the top, do the same thing. trying to do is just get this to stick these two fingers right here they're just kind of bridging right between those points 
I am going to leave those just for a little bit and then come back to them and get them to lock in. They are getting really close to trying to. Let's see if I can absorb some of this with a towel. We are getting there, but it just has a little too much tension versus the water. Top one in though. Work our way down. This one I might have to wait a little bit longer just because it is on the bottom. Gravity is pulling down that little extra bit of moisture and just kind of letting it hang out there. So I am going to let this one sit just to make sure that we don't have anything popping up while that is sitting. I'm gonna wipe down those edges, make sure nothing trails into there. And we got this one in really nice at the top. Just gonna give this one down here a little bit more time. Looks like it wants to stick. It's just gonna take a little bit. In the meantime, we will move on to the hood and the roof. We'll revisit that one in a little while. Right, so now that we've gone on to the headlight, we're letting that sit for a little while. We're gonna move on to the roof, and then we're gonna do the hood. The roof is going to be a little bit awkward, so if you do have a second person, that will definitely help you guys out. But if you don't, that is okay as well. Try and do my best. You definitely want to get a lot of water so you can set set your spray bottle to bad dog and spray as far as you can. Just make sure that you have a good amount of water all on the roof. And you see me spraying down the windshield a little bit too. That's not because I have a bad aim. That is on purpose. Before I lay this on the roof, I am going to put it on the windshield kind of like a banner. And that's going to help me pull it. This is for the solo DIYers because sometimes not everybody has someone they can trust to not mess something up. So you'd rather do it yourself, that is okay. Just gonna pull that about partially there. Same thing, just keep on scooting it over. As always, clean hands are very important. Just gonna keep spraying, keep moving. If you do feel like it's getting bunched up like it is right there, that's fine. As long as it's wet, it won't fold over itself and get stuck. Now you can pull this back to where it was. Clean hands are definitely very important for this. Now we're gonna pull it up, flip it to the other side, and we're gonna do the same thing. Yes, you could start with it upside down like this and then roll it over. You do not have to do it with it right side up to begin with. It's just the way that I went about it. Tons of water. We're gonna go to about halfway. There we go. That is folded over itself, but I'm not worried because it is wet underneath there. Just gonna lay this down. Very nice. Just gonna move the whole thing up here. So now we have this set up here. It's okay if you have a tunnel over there on that side. I'm going to just pull up where we started. Just let that liner go underneath. Just gonna slowly pull that liner out. Get this to lay down just a little bit. Almost there. 
This is why you do want to pull it off of the liner first because it is definitely a lot easier to get it to come off when it's still wet. And once you have those edges down, you can just slide it into place. And this one's not going to require any stretching, but it is up to you if you want to go past this little body line or if you want to go just right on top of it. I'm going to sit right on top of it. And once you have the piece centered, you're going to start from center out. So I'm going to make sure that this is locked in in the middle. And I'm going to push all that water down and out. If you see it start to shift, you do still have a little bit of time to move it. This one isn't difficult, it's just trying to get it started that makes it one of the difficult parts. But other than that, it's not much different than the rest. We're just going to go back over it and then we'll head over to the other side and get that down. This side in too. You're just about there. Of course, always wipe down your area. I'm not gonna wipe down everything because wiping down this whole windshield will take a while. You guys don't need to know how to wipe down a windshield. But with the PPF, I am going to treat this the same. Wipe away from those edges. Make sure to not get the towel caught up on those edges. And then we will move on down to the hood. All right, so last but not least, we do have the hood to put on. This one is not any different as far as your prep work. You just want to spray the hood a very good amount. Make sure you have really good coverage with that soap and water and pulling this off of the backing. Always good to spray as you go so that way you're not missing a spot and nothing ends up getting stuck to itself. Get my hands under here. Back over again. Quick. Now take into account which way it is facing. Right now I have the hood upside down. Let's see if I can try and cradle it with my hands. So I let it drape over the hood. If you do need to use your fingertips, that is fine. This side didn't go as well, but that's fine. Now I just want to shift it into place. And I am going to focus on the middle first. And I'm going to work those ends after. I'm trying to move it down as close as I can to the edge of the hood. Spray the top as usual. Grab that underground graphic squeegee. Move the water out from the top. This might take a little bit of effort just because there's a lot of water on the hood. So you do want to just flick that water out and up. Even though we wiped off the windshield, it might end up on the windshield again, given as much water is on here. But we 
are going to focus on this middle first and get as much of the water as we can out of the center, which is very important to do first. That is going to allow you to curve the film around those corners so you don't have any fingers. I can seem like I'm just kind of doing the same thing over again, which I am, but it is helping me to make sure that this center is down. Now, once you have that set, you come back over here. If you need to lift this up and spray it so it moves around a little bit more for you. If you heard that click, that was it getting stuck. Now that we locked in that middle, I can pull this with my hand, which will get rid of the fingers that form right here on this corner. You might have to try a couple different hand positions just to make it work, but eventually it will lock into place for you. So I'm gonna squeegee my water up towards my hand, so that way I'm not moving the film around too much. And keep that same edge Move it down just a little bit and I kind of lift it up a little. I'm just gonna work that water out on that corner. Still holding tension with our left hand. towards that edge. Just keep pulling. If you slide your hand over, push down with your opposing hand so that way it doesn't try to go back to its original state and pull back on you. So now I have from the middle of the hood locked in up until where the projector is in the headlight. Now it's relaxed on its own. I can get the rest of this out without a hassle. Yeah, it will still move around, so you do want to make sure that your squeegee is wet by spraying the surface that you're working on. Before moving on to the other side, I am going to wipe this half of the hood down just to see if I have any water pockets because right now would be the best time to take care of those. I do have one right here. There is still moisture underneath here, so that will allow me to push out some of those water pockets. Those can evaporate over time, but if you do have a dark Bronco, then they could possibly dry up and have somewhat of a hazy look to them. So to prevent that, always wipe down your work, double check what everything looks like. You might have to look at things at a couple different awkward angles, but that ensures that your install looks really good. Same thing on this side, we already have that middle lock down. So we're gonna pull up to about where it starts getting a little bit resistant. Spray the hood down, spray your material, lay this over. I have found that it's easier with the surface dry and your hand dry to shift the film over just to close in that corner. And then once you are happy with that fitment, you can spray the top, keeping your hand where it is, only adding a little bit of pressure. Now, same as the passenger side, just gonna bring that water towards my hand. Because that is the direction that I'm pulling. See, we already got that corner down. Really, it's just the corner that's the tough part about this install. Once that's locked in, everything else 
falls into place. Once again, I squeeze it up to roughly where that projector is. I do have a little bit of a finger here, but that is no problem. That's not one of the high tension spots on the hood. So that will just lay right down. I do have a little bit of overhang right here. I am gonna have to let that sit for a little while, possibly about an hour or so. And then I will be able to get it to stick. That mostly depends on how much soap that you use. That's why we do recommend those eight to 10 drops if you're in a good climate. Then it won't take too long for that to dry unless you used a lot of soap, which it will be okay. It will still dry. It'll just take a while. Speaking of drying, we were able to get that headlight to go back down. So as with everything else, we are going to wipe down our work area, wiping away from those edges. You do want to wipe down the rest of the hood just to make sure that you don't have any water trailing back in there. Of course, if water does go back into the PPF, then it will take a while for it to dry. So just protecting yourself for the future. We're gonna take care of that excess water. This will probably take me a little while. So while I am cleaning this up, I hope you guys were able to learn tons of information on our Bronco Sport PPF. We will have this up on the website. I believe we will have it in a rendering using red pieces just to show where everything is going to go because it would be extremely difficult to take a picture of the PPF while it's installed. So we will have those red examples up on the website. As I said before, if you guys do want to use certain pieces and not others, you can request that to us. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, comments, anything at all, please let us know. We are here from Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We will answer to phone calls or emails. Also give us a follow on Facebook or Instagram. And please like and subscribe. Thank you.